All right, today's the day we're putting more compost in that garden box we built that you saw in the last video. We're filling it up and we're also amending beds a little late in the season, but because of the virus, we didn't have any compost. We usually get it from um, a certain source and so they were out because everyone was getting it all at once. So I wasn't expecting that. Um, but yeah, let's go see what they're up to in there. I just got done milking and I cut my finger trimming a goat hoof. Good night. Stop right here. Oh my God. What are you doing, kitty? Kitty. What are you doing? All right, so we're amending the beds here. So I had put goat compost in here and some straw. So we'll add this and then put straw on top. Okay, so they did awesome. Um, they unloaded like, so we actually get all of our compost from the city. So they do scraps and they pick up your scraps for free. Hold on, there's dust here. <laughs> They pick up your your scraps for free and then they compost it and they also make mulch. A lot of people have opinions about using city mulch, but, or, um, sorry, compost, but we've always done it and we've had very successful gardens in the past. It's so cheap. It, for that huge truckload, it was like a gigantic scoop, which is probably considered like a scoop and a half. We pay $25 and that is why we use that. So... Basically, if you guys are in a situation where you can't afford to go and buy like a bunch of bags of organic um, compost and garden bed mix and stuff like that, then this is a good option for you. And we, always, we also use um, the goat manure. If you know someone who has a horse or a pig or something, they may be willing for you to just come and clean out their stall and take it out for free or pay a very small fee. Um, next year I really want to, so we have plans for this garden, but, um, so we have a plan to put, we ended up putting that new one back here, but we have to put one more here and then one more garden bed here in this little hole here. Um, that's what I want in here. And then, I don't know after that but I do have plans to expand this direction and do maybe some corn maybe some kind of grain like experiment with that and we can also put um things like garlic and onions probably out there because most animals don't like to eat those like the rabbits will leave them alone and all that so that's the plan and if we do that then I just want to have the goats and pigs come through in this area and get that kind of ready and then we'll just dump a whole truckload of compost and then cover it with straw to get that cover crop because the straw has a seed in it. So that's pretty much like the future plans probably next year we might tackle that just depending on what kind of situations are going on with animals. So animals are always going to take priority garden is not something that we are profiting from but the animals are so they're gonna take priority um the garden is for us and we have to grow a lot of food in order to sustain ourselves we are a large family family of seven okay <laughs> like that's a lot so i'm very excited that i over planted tomatoes so let me think yeah so basically like What's going to be going on in the garden this week is we're going to finish pulling all the weeds and amending beds. And then once I get my plants in the ground, that's when I add the straw. So I just put it like around all the plants. And that's what's going on. We do have some peas right here. And like I showed before, you watched me plant my onions and garlic. You can plant onions and garlic twice a year. I usually do it in the spring. Um, but that's something that I might experiment with in the fall. 
I have not been successful with a fall garden and I also haven't really tried very hard to be successful with a fall garden. Um, so there's that. But basically the plan is grow a lot of tomatoes. We eat salsa all the time. We eat marinara sauce all the time. We use diced tomatoes all the time. Like I want to grow as many tomatoes as I can fit in this place and then give the rest away to people who can use them. But um, that's the plan. And then as many green beans as we can grow and peppers, cause that's something that we use a lot of. And if I can can a ton of that stuff, especially peppers, I think I can make that last two years if, and then I won't have to grow them next year, if I can get a really good crop this year. And of course all the fresh stuff that's fun to have. Onions we use all the time, garlic. Like that's kind of where I'm at. Um, we are gonna be growing some things that are more for like right now. We're gonna be growing watermelon, zucchini, um, summer squash I think I have too. And also we'll have, my hands are so dirty. So <laughs> what was I gonna say? Yeah, okay, so I think we have spaghetti squash to grow, and what else? Pumpkins. We're gonna grow pumpkins. Um, the kids wanna grow pumpkins. One of my friends from work gave me a pack for like gigantic pumpkins, which I think I'm gonna plant outside of the garden in this area here where we have our um, lilac bushes and stuff because I don't wanna take up space for that. But I have a couple different varieties of pumpkin, some that are um, sweet pie pumpkins. <laughs> Josie's heard me talking about pumpkins and she's all excited. <laughs> so yeah, pumpkins are gonna go out somewhere else and we might just have to do a makeshift, like grab a few tea posts and put some chicken wire around it so the dog will stay out of it pretty much. I don't think like I'm gonna have an issue with other animals getting it. What else do you have to plant? Sunflower seeds. Yeah, so we got a lot to do this week and I have today and tomorrow where I'm off work and then Monday. So in those three days, I'm gonna be basically trying to get everything I can in this garden. So that's the story y'all. And I'm gonna, once I'm done like pulling some of these weeds and actually maybe right now I'll have the kids bring them out. I'm gonna bring out my tomato plants and put them in the garden so I like to put them outside on the porch in like a, a nicer area for them at first for like a couple days. And then I bring them to the garden and put them in the actual beds that I'm gonna plant them in. So they get used to the exact light and heat and everything that they'll be um, planted in. So we'll bring them out today, see how they do in the late afternoon. If they don't look wilty, then I'll leave them overnight. If they do look wilty, we might have to pull them back in and do a little bit more care for them. So we'll see how that goes, but our lows are in the 50s, which is what we're looking for. And they're in the 50s much of last week and all of this week. So the 10 day forecast looks good. Um, and when once you get that 10 day forecast looking good for a couple weeks, then it's usually safe to plant them. Our last frost day of estimation is April 15th, it's April 23rd right now. So I like to play it a little safe because I got burned last year when we had a weird cold snap and I lost tomato plants that I had already planted in the ground. So there's that. so I am done I'll show you in a minute I'm ending in the gardens we brought all the plants out the kids brought them out for me I put more straw on the potatoes like I was saying that I needed to do and we just moved the goats the all the boys we have three weathers and one buck we moved them and we're having them start to clear out that back area I was telling you about for um, future garden and we also want it to be cleared out because we don't like stuff right against the back of our fence, just for like fire safety reasons and stuff. So I'll show you them. But yeah, I think that's gonna be it for this video. I'll just do a little music at the end here. You guys, thank you so much for watching again. 
and give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on new videos. And I'll just show you a little garden and a little goat action, all right? So you guys, I'll see you in the next one, bye.